set the stage for the conflict between the Russian Federation and NATO. January would see talks between the US, West German, and Soviet governments on how potential German reunification could work. The reunion was considered inevitable on both sides of the Iron Curtain, but the Soviets considered East Germany the very heart of their Warsaw Pact. The Soviet foreign minister declared, if East Germany ceases to exist, Soviet troops will be pulled out of Hungary and Czechoslovakia. Poland will also not want them. What purpose, then, would the Warsaw Pact have? A Secretary of State James Baker and Soviet Premier Mikhail Gorbachev would have a fateful discussion, with Baker insisting that reunification of Germany would cause no extension of NATO forces into Eastern Europe. Gorbachev in return asserted that NATO expansion would not be accepted by the Soviet Union. The two agreed to put forward the treaty on the final settlement with respect to Germany, or 2 plus 4 agreement, West and East Germany being the two, and the US, UK, France, and the USSR being the four. This treaty laid the groundwork for the peaceful reunification of Germany and the withdrawal of all occupying troops from both NATO and the Warsaw Pact. And it is here that history turns. Gorbachev says that he left this meeting assured of no further NATO expansion. In fact, to the Premier, it was not even an issue. The topic of NATO expansion was not discussed at all. In those years, not even after the Warsaw Pact ceased to exist in 1991. Baker, for his part, insists that his talks with Gorbachev applied solely to East Germany, and he never ruled out NATO expansion in the slightest. Nevertheless, Gorbachev and many officials from both the former USSR and current Russian Federation view Gorbachev's talks with Baker as something of a promise. And even future CIA director Robert Gates opined that the Soviets had been led to believe NATO would not accept Eastern European members. The collapse of the USSR in 1991 would turn the situation on its head. As the new Russian Federation grappled with internal strife and the growing pains of trying to transition from a single-party rule to democracy, the former nations of the Warsaw Pact eyed the possibility of joining NATO. Russia would attempt to preempt this by forming the United Armed Forces, later called the Collective Security Treaty Organization in 1992. A collective defense compact in NATO's spirit this initial group consisted of Russia, Armenia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Tajikistan, and Kyrgyzstan. Despite the CSTO, the possibility of former Soviet states joining NATO was still on the table. Perhaps even Russia would be brought into their former enemy's fold. For their part, NATO leaders were willing to admit new members only if they could contribute to the bloc's goal of collective security. This disqualified Russia outright, as the newly birthed nation contended with military and intelligence communities squarely out of state control, a constitutional crisis in 1993 as Boris Yeltsin began consolidating power, and terror and counter-terror in Chechnya, all problems that made Russia untrustworthy in NATO eyes.